Welcome to Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. A place to connect, to grow, and to cultivate your faith in Christ. Together, we'll learn how to stand in victory each and every day. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about turning back, and we're going to encourage you not to turn back. And we mean turning back to the law, because we as Christians have been freed from the law. Once you become a Christian and ask Jesus to be Lord and Savior of your life, he died so that we could be free from the law of trying to death. please him, uh, trying to get so him trying to, to live love us, holy enough try, that he loves us. Exactly, and you know, so many people, uh, Al, still they, doing it. they do. They turn back to the law, and you know, even myself in my own life, uh, I, you know, like the devil just puts this stuff in me, and I know it. But sometimes it goes on for a little bit before I realize it. Like if if something happens to me physically, if someone go, what did I do? That's the enemy saying, you brought this on because you did that, you know, and I, I'm free from that. I'm free from all of that. I'm free from the judgment. I'm free from everything. So, uh, but we put ourselves right back under a law right. that we were freed from and right. accepted it. You know, I have a friend and she is now I, I sat with this friend for years weekly and teaching her and putting the word of God into her and, and other people too. And we would go through one series after another. And she was an awesome Christian lady. I moved away for 10 years and she just kept it going. And she was strong and she was just wonderful in God, understood everything, just had insight and revelation. And she's awesome. She was really awesome. Now she's 80 years old. Okay, she's been through, she's actually 86 right now, I think. Uh, she's been through a heck of a time. Uh, her husband got sick, but I'll, but I'll go over that later. And, and um, she said to me, I heard from her, I don't think I'm saved anymore. I don't think I'm saved. How can I be sure? This is after walking with the Lord for 20 years, serving him, reading and living in his word, doing the right things. I knew we knew them both very well. And she said, I don't think I'm saved. And so first, we're going to cover the requirement for being saved. And second, we're going to look at some of the reasons why people think they aren't saved any well, longer. You know, I'll give you one reason right now. The devil shows up. And what the devil does is after doing all that she's done, the devil shows up and goes, and the devil never says, I don't think you're saved. You're not saved. He says it like this. I don't think I'm saved. In other words, he gets you to speak it in the first person. So you say, I don't think I'm saved. And then what the devil does is to burden you because he knows you're not going to go. You're not going to give up on this whole yeah. thing. He begins to load you with more and more and more. And he begins to put so much of a burden on you, you give up. Right. Everything right. what the devil is a strategy to get you to quit. Wow. And that's what he was trying to do with her. He was, oh, you read the Bible 30 minutes a day? Yeah, that's good. should be 35. It's never enough. It's never enough. And he keeps, like what you, you're, like yes. you're going to explain. It's always never enough, and he's constantly putting so much on you, and his plan is to get you offended at God. Wow. That's the plan. If he either needs the plan is either rip you from your salvation, which he can't do. You have to give it up. Right. And usually it's that doesn't work anyway, but he wants to get you offended at God so he can shut you down from doing anything. Yeah, yeah. And that's I a get plan. It. That's a get them offended at God. But and and I don't think she was Al though. But but, but no, she wouldn't be. She's no. strong enough. But that's the plan. Yeah. The people are like, oh, I'm not end. doing good enough. I'm not living holy enough. I'm yes. not. I'm, I'm it's not, the guilt. It's the guilt and condemnation. Yeah. And he keeps pushing it and pushing it until finally you're shut down. In other words, you'll be saved. You'll go to heaven, but you won't do anything here in the Christian life for God because everything is just not good enough. Wow. Wow, that's so really go ahead. good. Well, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. This is from the Passion Translation. 
For by grace you have been saved by faith. Nothing you did could ever earn this salvation, for it was the love gift from God that brought us to Christ. So no one will ever be able to boast. He did it this way. He gave it as a gift so we wouldn't boast. For salvation is never a reward for good works or human striving. Wow, Wow, that is so good. The idea of this thing being a gift given to you. It's so foreign to the way we live. Not, you know what yeah. I mean? You got to work. You got to earn it. You got to, and God just said, oh, I freely gave you this gift, but we have to receive it. We have to believe it. Well, I receive gifts when I get them. <laughs> yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> right? It's a gift given to us by God. Once we believe, we receive the gift, the gift of his grace. And man, I'm big on grace. I'm really big on grace because it's like, if he died and gave all this to me by grace, why are you trying to live so holy and failing anyway? Yeah. You know, the whole thing was you better watch out. You better live holy or God's going to get you. He's not going to get me ever. He died. It's a free gift of grace. Right. He's for me, not against me. Right. Right. So much was accomplished for us on the cross. And this is the thing that I'm big on. It's called the finished works of the cross. When Jesus died and said, it is finished. Right. It didn't mean your salvation was finished or purchased. It meant your healing was purchased. It's available to you. Deliverance from demonic forces is available to you. Prosperity is available to you. It's not going to fall. It it isn't like a money bag falls out of the sky and hits you in the head. But it's all available because of what he did. It was a gift of God dying on the cross. And it's his grace offered to you. Do you want this? And I know that people have said to me, I've had people say to me, no, I don't want it. Yeah. For what, You know what's a big hang up for a lot of people? For not getting saved is where they came from. In other words, they came from a, I don't know, a family that was like Hindu. And then, well, if I get saved, what about my parents? Yeah. They're, then that means they're not saved, and I can't bear that. So they just say, I don't want it. That's that's right. That's right. My parents are no longer here anymore, and they didn't do any of this that you're telling me. You got it. You, you, I, I've talked to people like that. Well, you know what I do with them normally? I, I, I say is, let's start with you first. Yeah. But- and then we work that, and then we'll go back to your parents, and we'll talk about that. That usually will let me at least talk to them a little bit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a big hang up for is people very... getting saved. They, they, okay, okay, Jesus died. I get it. I get it. It's on the cross. But what about mom and dad who died already? Yeah, very true. They can't bear it. So Jesus took our punishment. We don't have to pay for our sins. And that's another whole thing. Jesus literally paid for it. And what we try to pay it anyway. Yeah. You could never earn salvation. We could never do enough to earn it. You, right. you, no one's ever going to be holy enough to earn it. No one's ever going to follow God's plan perfect enough to earn it. That's right. It's a free gift. We can't. We can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's yeah. humbling when it's a free gift. Yeah. Uh, we could um, <laughs> we, we just think about your sin before you got saved, that he forgave you. Think about your sin after you got saved. Hmm. It's a free gift. It's like I'm not counting this against you. Right. Praise because of what I did, you know, he took our place. And you could say it this way, God satisfied. Oh, the scripture says he is. You know what he I mean? He is satisfied. He's satisfied. He's satisfied that sin was punished. And yep. he sent his one and only sinless son to do it. Right. So he it. took it for us. Yes, he did. And, you wow. know, it's kind of hard to grab. It's like, oh, I, I got to pay for my own sins. You die, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> And, and I had somebody say that to me once. I said, you don't want to pay for your own <laughs> sins. Trust me, it's way worse than you think. That's but right. what he meant was I'm trying to live perfectly holy and I'm trying to do this right. right. And my whole point to him was you're never going to live perfectly holy. Right. I think it was James who said if you're guilty of one point of the Lord, you're guilty of Absolutely. the whole Absolutely, he did. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So there's no strings attached to this gift. No, no. earning attached. No, no. You don't earn a gift, you receive right. a gift. And just accept it. You know what I mean? Some people really have trouble accepting that gift. That's and right. they don't, they have trouble accepting the gift of grace because they feel like they're not good enough for it or they're not worthy of it. Well, you're not. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's you right. know, when someone gives me a gift, you want to give me a gift or someone gives me a gift, 
it's got nothing to do whether I'm worthy or not to receive That's the right. gift. It's got nothing to do That's with right. me. That's what a gift is, right? They're right, giving right, this to right, me. Right, right. They're not giving it to me. And they could give it to me because I'm so wonderful and we know all of that. <laughs> yeah. But they give it to you based on what they want to do. They want to give you a gift and it's not based on uh, whether you're worthy to receive the It's a gift. Right. You know, Al, I was thinking, you know, we need to really fill ourselves with the Word of God. And every single day, most people go to church on Sunday and they feel that that will keep them till the following Sunday. But it's not true. We need to get fill ourselves. We need to grow in the Lord. And we, we need do. to be constantly uh, watching, learning, reading books. And, you know, yes. we have a lot of YouTube videos out there now that you can turn on and you put them on at your convenience. And yes. a lot of good information to help people. We have it that's out right. there. That's what that's what you and I do. I mean, it, you know, all day, every week, every day, every, hours in a day, we're on the internet looking at YouTube videos and listening to different ministers. You know, so you could go to our YouTube channel and you just type in Victory Life Today and then you will get so many more teachings. If you enjoy today's teaching, you'll enjoy all the others too. Make sure you subscribe to our channel too. Thanks so much. Can I you there. lose? Yeah, and but that's thing, right. Can you lose your salvation? I, and look, only if you reject Jesus once you've tasted him, once you have received him, you're you're born again, you're walking with him for years, you're you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues, you you serve him, you love him, and then you just reject him, you don't want him anymore. I mean, literally reject him. This is what I was going about with this is what the devil's plan is to create so much offense. You're so offended at God because of things that happened in your life. Right, and man. I know people that have lost children. And terrible things have happened, and where was God? Yeah. And you, the devil's plan is to get you so offended at God that you right. reject it. Right, right. Because right, God right. will never reject you, never. I don't care how much sin you've done, what you've done, God will never reject you. You would have to throw it away. And the scripture tells us this too. You know, it, they, God can't pardon you once you've tasted him. Because there's no excuse, man, for going back. Once you've tasted him and then reject him and say, I do not want Jesus anymore. I reject him. He can't pardon you anymore because once you knew him once and then rejected him and can no longer, the scripture tells us, be restored to him. Now, I really don't think this happens often. I don't know anybody has done that. I, I know I've seen a group on TV called the fundamentalists and they all rejected Jesus after they tasted of him, you know, and, 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 but they can never be restored to Christ again, ever. There is no room for repentance. I mean, we can be disappointed in things not turning out as we wanted, and we could even be offended at God at times, but unless you outwardly reject Jesus, you're still part of his family and you could even be in terrible sin. He won't what? reject you. Right. Knowing it's sin. And if you have that one inkling in you like, oh, I know I'm messing up. You haven't rejected him. You just haven't maybe trusted him in that one area for your life. But you, that's not rejection of him. My, you know, my, I've had in my own life times when I felt like, oh, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm mad at God. And, and why am I feeling like this, Lord? Is there something wrong with me? Am I rejecting you? And, and it, 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 this like reservation in your mind. And the Lord said to me, that's not even you. That's the devil trying to get you to think. Yes, yes. To think incorrect, to yeah. think this way, to try to, it's like, why is there a level of rebellion still in me? It isn't in you. That's right. It's not in you. That's the devil right. th is trying to make you think there's a level of rebellion in you yeah. and you go, oh, well, I give up. That's right. You ha even giving up isn't good enough. You'd have to outwardly reject it. See, and my friend, she never rejected never. Jesus. She was going through such a hard time, Al. Her husband was in memory uh. care. It was been four years. And this woman visited him every single day for years. Do you know how hard that was for, he for, for her to walk in to visit her husband who just thought she was a pretty little lady that came to visit him? And then when she left... He forgot totally about her. And then the next day, oh, look, a pretty little lady is visiting me. And he never even knew who she was. You know how hard that was on her for years and years and years until he passed. So 
what she was thinking probably was she didn't have such a gr first of all she didn't even have a great relationship with her sons and that was another whole story and uh, she wasn't really in a good place when when she told me that she wasn't saved she was and you know you're not let me just tell you something this is the one thing I told her you won't feel you can't feel salvation well that's good I you like can't that. feel salvation it's not tangible you have to know you're saved and that God will never reject you. Uh, I don't feel it. I just know it. Now look at this. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 12 to 13 says, Whoever has the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son does not possess eternal life. I've written this letter to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you will be assured and know without a doubt that you have eternal life. You couldn't convince me that I don't have that for nothing. I'm telling you what. I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. I mess up every day. Sometimes I get sad. Sometimes I get disappointed. Sometimes I sin. I know I'm saved. This woman for years knew without a doubt that she was saved. So what happened? So we're going to go to the book of Acts. Out. Well, you know what happened to her? It just got, it all got so bad for her. The life was so hard and so yeah. bad. She was beginning to wonder like, am I even a Christian anymore? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? And that'll happen to anybody, and it's got nothing to do with your salvation. Exactly. You're saved. Exactly, exactly. And we're going to go to the book of Acts chapter 15, where Paul and Barnabas returned to Antioch, which is where they were originally sent out as missionaries, okay? And they wanted to return to see how the church was doing, how the believers were doing. They were checking up on them. And they were there for a while, but some false teachers came on the scene, and they started telling the people, unless you're circumcised, as the law of Moses requires, you can't be saved. So now they're bringing everybody back to the law of Moses, right? And before Jesus came on the scene, they were referring to the non-Jews. They were referring to the uh, the Gentiles. They were telling them, you have to be circumcised, you know? Now, a whole new world opened up for these Gentiles who were the non-Jews. They were now included, and they could receive eternal life just like the Jews were as a free gift. Now, remember, they were free from the law. They were free from self-righteousness. They could do nothing to earn salvation. Okay, they were free from the bondage of trying to obey the law to get saved. And the same applied to the Gentiles as to the Jews. So this is what used to be. And then we were all free. Yeah, we're all, you know what, the, under Christ, we're all free from the law. Absolutely. And you know, the thing about it is in my own life, I got saved when I was 29, so I didn't know any law, law, no law. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just did what I wanted. Right, <laughs> and right, and I, right. If I did something I, wrong, it was just, I hope I don't get caught. Yeah. I didn't care. Right, 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 right. So then I got saved and born again. I'm all happy. I'm in the, and then they began to put all these laws and rules and regulations on me of all of this holy living that I couldn't do, especially when you've lived 29 years in the way of the world. That's, I got news for you. That'll be with you to the end yeah. because that was part of your life. And I started trying to live, you know, they were trying to bring me back under the law. Right. And they had all these laws that I had to do. And and these teachers, these false teachers, yeah, go ahead. I knew I was saved yes, because I didn't get did. saved because of the law. I got saved because I heard the word of the Lord. That's Someone right. had spoken it to me. That's why I got saved. And now they began to put me under all these laws because I wasn't this and I wasn't that. That's and they right. didn't do this. And I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Right. And, you know, I, I fell for it. They they put, they put took, I was Total freedom when I got saved. Yeah, you were, yeah. I knew God loved me, and I knew I was saved, and I knew he wanted good things. I used to go to them, and I remember those teachers, and I used, to, <laughs> I used to say, man, God loves me. He wants me to be so rich, and he oh, wants no. me to, and they, you could see the top of their head would blow off. <laughs> you got to be poor, you evil thing. And I said, why, why do I got to do that? And, uh... You, you know, oh, you're funny. I, I used to sit there and go, what's wrong with you guys? I thought God loved me. If he took me the way I was at 29 years of age, what is your problem? <laughs> you know, why are they, these guys were all brought up in the church yes. and they were brought up under the law from yeah. day one and they don't know any other way. Yeah. But one of the things that I found about people who live under the law, there's always a law somewhere they've excluded 
because oh, yes. that's there's always you know in fact if you read the old testament law then you can't even do it it's that's just right. the most ridiculous thing that's right so they take the parts you can't do and they throw them out and they make you do the parts you can do <laughs> and what I found they do is, uh, I'm going to use an example. The, the people who put you under the law, trust me, they don't live holy either. Yes. There's something going on in their life where they're not perfectly holy. Yes. But they're trying to make you be perfectly holy and fit in with their mold. In other words, out of these 10 laws, maybe this one, the ninth one, they exclude. And, and I'll give an example. Um some of them will say, no drinking. Drinking is wrong. You drink one drop of liquor, you're going to hell. So you can't drink. But if you go to this other denomination, you drink all you want. And that's okay. Somehow that, because they like to drink, that drinking law got excluded from the law. So what I used to say is you got to go find the church that has the laws you like. <laughs> okay. And when they have the laws you don't like, you got to get out of there. This is how insane this law yes, thing yes. is. Well, look, that, let's go to the book of Acts because we don't have much time here. But oh Paul and God, Bar yeah. Barnabas, they had a, they had two sides. Now they were saying, "No, you don't have to be. You don't have to go back to the law. You are free now." So the two sides went back to the council in Jerusalem to bring it before these judges or whatever, and uh, they finally realized, "No, we are free from the law. Go back. You don't you don't need to be circumcised." And so, but many of us put ourselves right back under the law when when we feel we don't. Make Measure up, and I think this is what happened to my friend. I think uh, wrong thinking attacked her uh, because she was so preoccupied with caring for her husband. Uh, she actually felt guilt and condemnation and shame for not giving more time to God. And I really believe that that was it. And I believe the enemy came in and said, "Look, you're spending all this time with a man who doesn't even know you. You know why are you doing that? What do you? How do you think God feels?" He's left all by himself, it's and now you're always the right. devil. So it was such an emotional time for her, and she did and said some things that probably were not right, and she felt condemned, and she was putting herself right back under. I've got to do this, 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 this to please God. I'm not doing enough, like you said. It's the law of self righteousness. This is exactly why these teachers, which what what they were trying to do with Paul and Barnabas here with the teachers in the book of Acts with the new believers. They were trying to get them back into the earning, earning, earning stages of salvation. And they were lying to them. And Paul called them foolish Galatians. You know, he called he in the book of Galatians, he called them foolish Galatians because those people were trying to go back to the law. And they were, they were, they they were actually nullifying what Christ did on the cross, putting it aside, ignoring it, like a because slap in what, the face. Yeah, it's a slap in the face to Christ, but it's even more. So you now you you got saved by hearing the word of God, and now that you got saved, you go back to the law. Why didn't you just go in the law all by itself? It, it seems like yeah, it, it, it's such a, it's like I told you. Everybody I ever knew who was a teacher, a pastor, who was heavy in the law eventually fell and sinned in some wow, way and got yes. thrown out yes, one you can't after keep the it. other because you can't keep it. No and, one's holy and enough to keep it. And you get frustrated. And here's what you do. Well, I I can't keep it, so I'm just not going to uh, try. So they relieve the happens. church. Next thing you know, they're drunks or whatever is wrong with their tell, life. Tell the story of uh, this woman that we knew. We only have a couple minutes uh, who went, actually went back to the law after her husband died. She oh. was so free. and Yeah, her and her husband, they were just so free. They, With they, grace and they, they were saved under grace. He was sickly, though. He was very sick. But we found them as friends, and we would go to their and, house and, and minister. They were and believing in grace, like they were uh, believing Andrew, and they just said, we're saved by grace. We get it. They have been religious all their lives. Yeah. And now they got it. They were free from the law. They were living their lives. And... Um, he got sick, and she was standing for him. She was big standing time. and believing, standing, and this is what the devil does. She was standing and believing, standing and believing while he died. Right, but she still didn't not like God. She she didn't even have an answer though. She really thought she was he was going to walk out of the bed, and that was it. He was like eighty five and had emphysema and everything like that. And I think yeah, he didn't. You yeah. know, he had emphysema, but he had smoked all his life. Right, right. And when he got emphysema, they had prayed for him and believed God. And this was awesome. He got right. totally healed. He lived eight more years. Right. He should have died right. way back then. Right. Is anybody thinking? But anyway, so he did die. And, and what happened was 
uh, I guess she got a little bit disappointed and she met up with these group of people and they kind of lured her in. They were false teachers. They and brought her under the law. They put her right back into the Old Testament, right back under the law. That when I went to her house, I used to on a regular basis have lunch with her. There wasn't one thing we could talk about because she talks about God all the time. But now it's how judgmental he is, how he's watching you with every move you make to smack you over the head. Yep. And if you don't <laughs> abide by this book, you yep. are going to, and if you could, and, you know, I would have to say things like, okay, so you're in the oh, Old Testament law. She says, absolutely, absolutely. And I said, okay, so so do you wear uh, a fabric that has polyester and cotton? She goes, oh, absolutely. Can't I said, well, it. over here it says you're not supposed to. Does that mean you're going to hell? Because that's what she was saying to me. She was saying you would go to hell if you don't abide by every single thing. God is going to come with anger and fire coming out of his nostrils. And he, she's a completely different person now. And you know what? She could say she's happy, but she can't be. And it goes back to what I say. They pick right. and choose the laws they right. want to believe because... Oh, oh, are you wearing this fabric? Oh, that's okay. I can wear that fabric. It's got nothing to do with it. And you're like, well, it's either, are you, this is what they do. It's so true. And make sure for your own self, guys, that you don't go back. You don't go back to trying to live a performance-based life in front of Jesus who freed you from performance-based living. Don't go back. You don't need to live the life of freedom and grace in him. Yes, you need to obey him. But if you mess up, he's there to pick up your mess and he's there to just carry you on. So just don't turn back to the law or any type of self-righteousness that there is. Just don't do it. Just receive his grace, live in it, and enjoy him. And we hope you enjoyed our show today. Go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org. Get anything you need. We have all sorts of resources there. Thanks so much for joining us. Victory is yours through Jesus Christ. We'll see you next time. Have you ever met anyone that can actually speak into your life? Al and Angie Burke have been given the ability by God to just speak the truth in a way that's understandable and receivable. They have the opportunity to share that truth of God with millions through this ministry. But the reality is that costs money to do. And so we're asking you, would you consider today joining this ministry joining the opportunity to let them deliver that truth to millions. You can do that by going to VictoryLifeMinistries.org and joining this ministry as a supporter. Thank you so much. Victory Life Ministries was founded to help you connect, grow, and flourish in a relationship with Jesus. Al and Angie Burke are committed to teaching the body of Christ how to walk in strength, in boldness, in love. Connect with us online today at VictoryLifeMinistries.org. You'll find the encouragement, inspiration, and resources you need to stand in victory each and every day. Join in on a growing community of believers that are partnering to bring these messages all over the world. With your help, we can make a change. We can shift the atmosphere. Live your best life. Live an effective life full of faith, hope, and vision. Live life above your circumstance.